Hey everybody, Chaotic Meatball here, and welcome back to another video. This time, I'm starting off the Fire Red Leaf Green 386 challenge, where I'll be going through the remakes of Kanto. Starting with the Johto and Hoenn Pokemon, we're given access to thanks to the National decks. You're probably already thinking of J Rose's 53 part series, where he's going through every Pokemon in red and blue, but I'm intrigued to see how well Pokemon do outside of their native regions. So today, we're taking a look at Chikorita. Taking a look at the moveset, we've got some pretty decent moves here. Synthesis, Body Slam, and Solar Beam are definitely what I'll be going for in terms of level up moves, but there's some great TMs here as well, such as Toxic, Hidden Power, Sunny Day, Protect, Solar Beam in case we need to swap around moves, Return, Double Team, Rest. There's a lot of stuff here, and it'll help a lot with this challenge. Now, let me explain the rules for this entire series here now. Firstly, no items in battle. Held items and items outside of battle are allowed. Second, I can use HM slaves, but not for battles or for winning battles with recoil damaging moves and being knocked out at the same time. Like if I took out an opponent's final Pokemon with double edge, but had an HM slave as a way to not run out of Pokemon and get counted a loss. Lastly, no glitches. Also, I'm on the drive for 50,000 subscribers by the end of this year, so if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and let's hit 2,000 likes on this video. So let's get straight into this. I modified my game to replace Bulbasaur with Chikorita, and since Charizard is by far going to be the most difficult Pokemon to take care of on the rival's team, I figured I needed to replace Bulbasaur. First battle goes pretty well though as I tackle his Charmander to death, and our first section of the game is relatively easy, since Chikorita learns Razor Leaf at level 8, giving me a really good option to take down Brock and Misty. The only problem is the bug catcher with a level 9 Weedle, which is a required trainer in Viridian Forest. I got relatively lucky with it since it didn't poison me and it used a ton of string shots, so I just took it down and got up to level 10. I know I shouldn't be wasting too many trainers, but I figured that I'd be better off if I didn't stick around the bug infested area where I wasn't doing much damage. I took down the Light Years trainer and destroyed Brock, one Razor Leaf for Geodude and one for Onyx, and with that that's one gym leader down, seven to go. I made sure to fight all the trainers on Route 3 and Mount Moon, none of which gave me any trouble because Razor Leaf ran through just about everything. And I also grabbed a Paris here, since Fire and Leaf Green have more HMs than Red and Blue, I'm gonna need three HM slaves, specifically Paris for Cut, Flash, and Rock Smash, anything convenient for Fly, and Lapras for Surf, Waterfall, and Strength. Okay, so I was wrong. I don't need Flash, of course. Lapras can get Rock Smash, and Farfetch can get both Cut and Fly, so I can go down to two HM Slaves from now on. Whoops. As soon as I took down the Rockets and grabbed the Helix Fossils, since if I didn't say what I took, you all asked, I emerged in Cerulean, and I just fought Misty's Gym. I'm in the low to mid-20s as a Grass type, and having just gotten Synthesis at level 22, so I figured why not. Staryu was a one-shot, and Starmie was a two-shot, barely doing any damage to me even though it outsped. Chikorita's defense is actually pretty good, and with that, it's time for our first difficult battle. Our rival starts off with a Pidgeotto, and unfortunately it has Sand Attack and resists Razor Leaf. I don't get Body Slam until level 29, so I just have to deal with it and make sure to use Synthesis. Luckily, Charmander doesn't do more than half with Ember, but he burns me, of course, so I try to poison him, failing due to Sand Attack and having to use Synthesis again. I just kept missing Poison Powder, basically requiring me to lose and try again. I hate accuracy lowering moves unless I use them. Second try goes much better since he only hits me with one Sand Attack and I took him down in a few Razor Leafs. Charmander, though, got a crit and I managed to take him down with only 13 HP left leading me to just heal with Synthesis and take down his Abra and Rattata with no problems. This opened up routes 24 and 25, which are some of the most trainer-dense areas in the game, so I was able to gain a few levels here and figured it'd be wise to do some more while I was able to access Route 11 as well as the SSN around Vermilion City. I have to take the ship down before getting access to Cut and therefore Lieutenant Surge, so I fought those trainers, grabbed the items, and made my way to the next rival battle. This one, though, goes pretty well due to having more levels over him than last time and having Body Slam, which two-shots Pidgeotto and not allowing him to pull off any sand attacks, leading to a clean sweep with it. Two-shotting Charmeleon, one-shotting Raticate, and one-shotting Kadabra. I knew that Body Slam was going to do wonders for the rival. I grabbed Cut and went straight for Lieutenant Surge, and after taking his trainers down, he didn't really leave much of an impression either. 
He led with Voltorb, which went down to a Razor Leaf after I missed the first time. Pikachu did the same, and Raichu was a bit of a pain, though, since it led with Double Team and paralyzed me. But I managed to make it out after a few attempts of landing Razor Leaf. Not bad, since he really couldn't do much other than stall me out, which didn't even work. And now here's where Kanto opens up. After defeating everyone on Routes 9, 10, and Rock Tunnel, I was basically able to go wherever I wanted to. This just led me to take out the trainers on Route 8, as well as in the Rocket Hideout, leading to my first battle with Giovanni. It was pitifully easy at this point, since I gained a ton of VXP and I was already level 46, meaning his Onyx and Rhyhorn both went down to a single Razor Leaf each, and Kangaskhan went down to two Body Slams after poisoning with Poison Powder. Before I left, I decided, hey, I may as well take down Rarica's gym since I'm high enough level, and thanks to Body Slam, that goal was shortly achieved. She led with Victory Bell, which went down to two Body Slams after paralyzing me, which is kind of annoying, but doesn't really do anything in the grand scheme of things since I have Synthesis. Tangela goes down to two Body Slams, even with Ingrain, wasting a full heal because I got the Paralysis again, and last up is Vileplume, and she's the only threat of their team, so I just went for Body Slam and hoped for the best, getting Acid, by far her weakest move, and by some sheer stroke of luck, I got the Paralysis for a third time this fight, winning with another Body Slam. Talk about a paralyzing defeat. <laughs> I'll stop now. Now I've got access to fly, all of the time taken here on out is from basically fighting trainers and running around. So I flew back to Lavender and oh boy, it's time for another rival fight. Rival 4s is pretty much Rival 3 again, especially since Pidgeotto barely lived my body slam again. What is with that thing? Anyway, next up was Charmeleon, it did the same thing, barely not going down. But Paralysis made it so it was an easy KO. New to the party was Execute, and it pulled off Hypnosis thanks to me missing Sand Attack. It didn't do enough to prevent me from attacking, so but I got confused too. Not much to inhibit me, but eh, good enough I guess. Kadabra went down to one Body Slam, and Gyarados was a two shot, though I thought it was going to be a 3 hit KO due to rolling so poorly on the first shot and getting high roll on the second one. Oh well, time to take down some ghosts. Since they're all poison type, they resist Razor Leaf and can't get hurt by Body Slam, but it really doesn't matter since all of them went down to one shot anyway since I was just such a high level. Team Rocket didn't stand a chance either, going down to a few moves apiece. And thanks to Mr. Fuji, even more of the region has opened up, meaning it's time to get even more experience. I mean, I may as well, since why waste it? It makes some of the lower level fights easier, yes, but at the same time, I still have to take care of the round 2 of the Elite 4 at the end of this run. Which gets up into the 70s, and I don't even think Chikorita is going to stand much of a chance either way. After taking down the Fighting Dojo, I decided to just take out Silphco. I'm at a high enough level for it, and I'm already here, so why not? After taking out all of the regular trainers, I stopped just short of Rival 5, since that battle's notoriously hard, and I don't think I'm ready yet. I'm going to need to be between level 65 and 70 to beat him. Luckily, there's a ton of trainers I haven't fought yet, so thanks to Cycling Road and Routes 12, 13, 14, and 15, I'm well prepared. Moving back to Rival 5 at level 65, I just went straight in with Body Slam, taking out Pidgeot in two of them before he could do any sand attacks. Next up is a hell of a threat though, and that's Charizard, which luckily gets paralyzed thanks to Body Slam. I heal with Synthesis as he's paralyzed and go for a second one, KOing him and moving on to Execute. It goes down in two body slams after missing a stun spore, and Alakazam goes down to one of them due to having less than pitiful defense. Last up is Gyarados, which unfortunately has Intimidate, so my body slam becomes a little bit weaker, but I have a new secret weapon, so after taking a Dragon Rage, I crit with my first Solar Beam, KOing him and showing me that good things are to come. I grabbed Lapras since I need a good HM slave going on in my party and moved on to Giovanni. And he's really not that big of a deal, since a ground-type user can't really combat a grass-type very well. Nidorino starts off as I go for Body Slam, easily bringing him into the red as he uses a pitiful Poison Sting. And poisons, of course, but I take him out with a Razor Leaf. Luckily, I have Synthesis, so I don't really care too much. I go for Solar Beam on Nidoqueen as it uses frickin' Tail Whip, allowing me to get off some massive damage. It nails a Double Kick as I barely miss the KO with Body Slam, getting the Paralysis, though. I finished it off, opting to heal on the next Pokemon. Kangaskhan's out next, so I heal twice with Synthesis as he uses freaking Rage, probably the best move it could have used in my situation, but terrible choice on his part. I took it down with a Body Slam and two Razor Leafs, leaving just Rhyhorn. 
Since it's rock ground type, though, it said goodbye as soon as it got a whiff of my razor leaf, leaving me on my way without a Master Ball in tow because I just don't care enough to talk to the old guy. With Team Rocket driven out, I can finally challenge Sabrina's Psychic Gym. Luckily, most Pokemon in the gym don't have a defense stat, so I ran through them with Body Slam, leaving Sabrina herself. Of course, no defense means no offense, so I take down Kadabra, Venomoth, Mr. Mime, and Alakazam, all with one Body Slam apiece. Light work if I do say so myself. Next up is Koga, and he's not that big of a deal either, though his poison types can pack a punch, especially when they all know Toxic. The, my first attempt went really well, though. KO'd coughing with two Razor Leafs after a Body Slam put him in rage for a Hyper Potion, leading to Muck. Body Slam did over half a use, Sludge, leaving me to get the KO on the second one. Third up is another coughing, going down to a critical Razor Leaf, and leaving just wheezing. I went for Body Slam, which did about a third as he hit Sludge for massive damage, leading me to use Synthesis and get in a cycle of doing so, getting poisoned after the third. He healed, allowed me to get a Body Slam and Paralysis off before being left with 3 HP. Sadly, he uses a full heal as a heal with Synthesis, leaving me in a pretty precarious position. Synthesis again and Sludge hits again, and I use another one to max out my HP, leaving me to just hit him with two more Body Slams, winning the fight with only 32 HP left. That was close. <laughs> I'm quite surprised that none of them went for Toxic. Maybe they read it as I was using a Bulbasaur since that's the start of the game thought I chose? Eh, who knows, maybe it's random. Next up is Blaine, but he's Fire-type, so I decided I needed some more levels, opting to take out the trainers on the water routes on both sides of the Seafoam Islands before stopping in Cinnabar. The Pokémon Mansion and Blaine's trainers were plenty enough to get me up to level 73, however that wasn't enough to get me the win on my first attempt. Or my second, or my third. Basically Arcanine kept destroying me with Fire Blast. I needed to outlast the PP of Fire Blast with Synthesis, but with only 5 PP this proved to be a challenge. So I went around Kanto grabbing whatever PP ups were available to me, getting up to 8 PP and challenging him again. I finally had an attempt after about 7 tries where I was burned, but I was able to win after his takedown reduced his HP enough and I got a critical hit. I definitely chalked that one up to luck, but hey, sometimes you gotta take it when you've been annoyed for a battle for nearly 40 minutes. Oh boy, time to hop on a boat. This is where the run is the most different compared to Red and Blue since there's no savvy islands in the originals. But here, the first visit isn't too important since there's no real boss battles here. However, there are quite a number of trainers and items to pick up, so I got up to level 75, destroying Moltres because I felt like it, and it allowed me to deliver the ruby to Celio and move back to face the last gym. Giovanni's gym is full of rock and ground type Pokemon, so I just took them all out, getting to level 77 before fighting him. Rhyhorn's a one-shot with Razor Leaf, Ditto Queen's a one-shot with Solar Beam, Nitto King's a one-shot with Solar Beam, Doug Trio's a one-shot with Razor Leaf, and his last Rhyhorn gets blasted by a critical hit for his troubles, leading to an easy badge. Not too often when you get to see Chikorita actually do well, since it's often considered the worst starter when compared to the other 23 in the franchise. And here's where things start getting relatively difficult. Rival 6 is a bit of a doozy, since I accidentally misclicked with Razor Leaf rather than Body Slam, so I got hit with an extra wing attack for my troubles causing me to use Synthesis and catch another one. Bad idea if I do say so myself, but I took it down, leading to Charizard at a whopping level 53. I get the Paralysis on the first Body Slam, but of course he criticals with Flamethrower, leading to a reset. That was just unlucky, I should be able to take him down on the second attempt. Well, I failed that as well. Shoot, I need to get this video out on time. I know, double team! <laughs> and just like that, his team falls apart without breaking much of a sweat. Building up six double teams on Pidgeot is the hardest part. Surviving after that is the easy part. Jarzer didn't manage to land a single hit on me as I took him down carefully, not to get him into healing range. Execute's already screwed thanks to the 60% accuracy on Hypnosis and 75 on Sunspore, so two body slams is enough to take it out. Alakazam goes down to a single body slam normally, and Rhyhorn goes down to a single Razor Leaf, leaving just Gyarados. Luckily, I get the Paralysis on the first Body Slam, so even though he set up Rain Dance and somehow hit a Hydro Pump through six double teams, I managed to finish him off in two more Razor Leafs, finishing the fight rather scot-free. Now it's time for the Elite Four, which actually gave me plenty of EXP for the Elite Four, luckily, getting Chikorita up to level 81, which I thought would be plenty enough to challenge with. Well, and it was, at least for the first two members. Most of Floralize Party is part Water type, so it's easy enough to get through that, just keep going for Razor Leaf and use Synthesis as needed. 
and that proved enough to get through Dugong, Slowbro, and Lapras, leaving me to Jinx. I figured Body Slam would be enough to KO, but unfortunately it put me to sleep and used Attract, which was probably the worst thing I could have happen since it two-shot me with Ice Punch. Great. I tried again, getting back to Jinx with a Chesto Berry, but luckily it didn't get to put me to sleep or Attract me, so I was pretty safe. Body Slam, Heal, Razor Leaf, and a Body Slam later, and it was down, leaving just Cloyster, which went down to a single Razor Leaf. Perfect. On to Bruno. Luckily, he starts with Onyx, which easily goes down to a Razor Leaf. Hitmonchan goes down to two Body Slams after getting paralyzed. Hitmonlee actually puts up a fight using a Mega Kick before going down to a few attacks, even with a full restore. And next up is Machamp, which is probably the most threatening of his team, but it isn't too bad all around. I went for Body Slam, getting a crit, but getting hit with Scary Face. Luckily, Citrus Berry allows him to not heal, so I go for Body Slam, but he nails a Cross Chop, leaving me with just 29 HP. And with a scary face, I'm not sure if I'm going to outspeed the Onyx. I don't. It hits a double edge, which I thought was going to be the end of me, but I somehow lived with 9 HP, allowing me to KO him with a Razor Leaf. Thank goodness, since I thought I was screwed. However, now I might be. Agathus Pokemon are all Poison type, and most are Ghost type, so I can't use Body Slam, and Razor Leaf is just way too weak to do any substantial damage. This led me to get KO'd a few times, so I figured I'd do some grinding. I grabbed 5 Meowths for pickup just in case I got some rare candies and maybe a TM for hidden power since I didn't know what type it was. I ended up getting to around level 95 before fighting the League again, destroying Lorelei and Bruno with my advancements and levels. And this time it was actually pretty easy. I maxed out my evasion with double team while she used shadow punch and a few double teams of her own, but I managed to get through relatively easily with solar beam. Even with a Pecha Berry, I got poisoned twice through this though, so I had to deal with that halfway through the battle. But Solar Beam put in plenty of work, allowing me to move on after KOing her final Pokemon, in this case a Haunter. And this is why you pick up PP items around the region, folks, because you'll be using so many moves. Oh man, it's so bad how many PP restoring items I need to heal after all of these battles. Because it's basically impossible to run through the Elite Four with only one Pokemon's worth of PP. Anyway, time for Lance. And he's not too bad since he starts off with Gyarados, allowing me to get off double teams without it being too much of a pain. He switched out for his level 60 Dragonite after he realized, hey, I really can't do anything to him, so I've just kept spamming Solar Beam until he went down. Nothing too special, though he did get me down to 4 HP thanks to Wing Attack, which was kinda scary. I put the sun back up, nailed a few more Solar Beams, and down went Dragonite. Nothing too crazy, but that quad resistance really made it a pain to take down. I got lucky that he hit a hyper beam and had to recover on his last turn, or else I would have been dead since the sun went out again. Aerodactyl's out next, and I heal with Synthesis again, and somehow get hit by Ancient Power, healing again and going back for Sunny Day and Solar Beam, taking Aerodactyl down in a single shot. Next up is Gyarados again, which went down to after another Solar Beam to due to being in red health, leaving me with two Dragonairs and three Solar Beams. I took down the first one with the Remain the Solar Beam since he decided to heal, leaving me to have to drain the remainder of my PP to attack the last one. I decided to set up another Sunny Day so that I could get back up to full, but I got paralyzed. Even worse. He nails Outrage, which luckily doesn't do much, but that can add up since I still have a lot of double teams I have to get rid of. He hits another one and I'm thinking to myself, how does he keep doing that? I have six double teams up. Please stop. Luckily though, I don't get hit too many more times after being able to struggle as Dragonair to death. Uh, I guess thanks Confusion, even though it didn't do th that much. Leaving me with just my rival. One full restore and max elixir later, and I'm back in the game. And if you thought Lance was bad, combine that with the PP stalling for Blaine, and you've got this fight. Jarzard has Fire Blast, and it can seriously put a pounding on me if I'm not careful. The first obstacle I have here is that Pidgeot and Charizard both have Aerial Ace, so it doesn't matter how many double teams I use, I'll always get hit. It's rough since it's also super effective against me. Luckily, I had Synthesis maxed out, so 8 PP is plenty enough to get through to the first two, even with Aerial Ace and Fire Blast. I managed to take down Charizard with a critical Solar Beam, leaving the last four of his team, which all weren't too hard to take down. Alakazam goes down to a single Solar Beam, Executor is a wall, but it doesn't stand much of a chance. Two Solar Beams is enough to take it down, but I'm only left with two left. A single one to take down Rhydon, leaving just Gyarados. Can I take it down in one Solar Beam? The answer is no. But I have a Lepaberry! Haha, <laughs> suck it Gyarados, I win. 
I somehow managed to do that below the lax level, so that means there's still a wee bit of room to improve on stats. Now for the fun for the difficult post-game battles. First one is up on one island, specifically on Mount Ember, and there's a rocket protected area where I can grab the ruby, giving me access to four, five, six, and seven islands. There's not much for four island other than a single rocket battle alongside Lorelei, but after getting a code on six island, I'm able to go fight the one true boss on the seven islands, and that's the rocket warehouse. Here we have two admins that weirdly don't have custom sprites, using the regular rocket sprites. But believe you me, they are bosses. The first one is really easy to take down, but the second one is a little bit more threatening. He starts off with a level 53 goal bat, so I set up some double teams as he goes for sludge bomb, doing half with a critical, but I'm able to keep setting up, getting him to miss me enough to heal and finally start nailing some solar beams. I managed to get confused and he healed, but after that it didn't really deter me because I set up another sunny day and nailed two solar memes, the second of them being a critical, scoring me the KO and getting to his wheezing. It takes a solar beam to get it to red health, missing with sludge bomb as he doesn't heal, allowing me to nail another one. Last up is Houndoom, which is the most threatening Pokemon on his team, luckily KOing it with a single critical, so that wasn't as much of a threat as I thought it would be. Fun fight, but still not threatening. But no, you don't want to see that. You want to see the round two of the Elite Four. How well is a level 100 Chikorita going to do against them? Well, after recovering the Sapphire, I had left the islands in the dust, leaving just those five battles between me and the end of this challenge. Lorelai is up first, and she starts with a level 64 Dugong. Yeah, I need to be max level for this, and I'm sure about 90% of my future runs of this will need to be as well. Unfortunately, she smartened up and stole my double team strategy, so I got Toxic to make sure to even the score, getting rid of Sunny Day since I can outlast thanks to Double Team and just hit two turn Solar Beams. Skipping ahead of some healing and more setting up, I nailed a single Solar Beam, KOing, leading to Skloister. It also goes down to a single Solar Beam, leaving only three more Pokemon. Her new member here is Pyloswine, who's part ground type, so I have an advantage over it, going down to a single Solar Beam. Next up is Lapras, which is bulky, but not bulky enough to live a single Solar Beam. <laughs> Next up is Jinx, and this is the last one, it's the most threatening part of her team as we learned in the first fight, so I poison with Toxic and go for a Solar Beam to finish her off, breaking through a tract and relieving me of one of those battles. Bruno's a little bit tricky here due to having Onyx into Steelix, but they're not good enough to stand up to a single Solar Beam each. I kept my health up with Synthesis and the occasional move he'd land through Double Team, allowing me to take down Hitmonchan, Machamp, and Hitmonlee relatively quickly and without that much trouble. Bruno is usually an easy fight though, so I, that's to be expected. Agatha is basically the same as before, except she now has a Crobat and Mistrevis, and I had to struggle her to death, but that's fine. Neither of them really stood much of a chance after a ton of double teams anyway. And Lance isn't too terrible either. But, he leads with a level 68 Gyarados, which is very strong, but it can't do too much to me once I've gotten enough double teams up. I made sure to give Chikorita a Cherry Berry since it does have Thunder Wave, which can strew me over later in the fight if I'm not careful. But luckily the double teams and the berry do the trick, getting me the KO after a Toxic and a Solar Beam, doing just enough to get away scot-free. Next up is Kingdra, who just eats a Toxic and Solar Beam while setting up useless Dragon Dances since it never actually got to use an attack. Third out is Aerodactyl, and again, Solar Beam is neutral, so I just use Toxic and Solar Beam after a few Synthesis uses to keep my HP up. Unfortunately, without Sunny Day, Solar Beam kinda keeps me wide open, so I'm only at 47 HP left, allowing Dragonite to KO. I get back to the Dragonite with relatively similar HP, instead going for Synthesis so it can't kill me straight away. It misses with Flamethrower, allowing me to get back to full and hit with Toxic. I know that Solar Beam isn't going to do jack all to it, so I wasted a few double teams so that I would be able to increase the damage output. However, he still scored a Flamethrower amid my high evasion levels. After a few turns, I had nailed with a critical Solar Beam, KOing with the Toxic damage. Last up is a level 72 Dragonite, which I had to make sure I handled in the same fashion especially since it has Ice Beam. I managed to survive one, leaving me to charge up a Solar Beam after a Synthesis, leading to minimal damage. I guess 120 power and stab is no match for quad resistance. Whoops. Luckily, he didn't heal and the Toxic damage just KO'd him while I was charging another one, so score one for Toxic being useful. 
leaving just one more battle between me and the end of the challenge. So, the final rival is Hell. Why? Because both his Tyranitar and Charizard have Aerial Ace, and Tyranitar has Sandstream, and in Generation 3, that Sandstorm doesn't go away unless I use another weather effect. Sadly, I dumped off Sunny Day like an idiot because I didn't realize Sandstream worked this way. I thought it went away after five turns. So, whoops. Wish Head hadn't done that, but either way, I would have needed Toxic Solar Beam since this is a double team, so it was either losing that or something else. Eventually, I just had to rely on RNG, just hoping to get crits at the right time, and eventually it happened after probably about 40 freaking attempts. I have finally had a good run, getting past Elite Heracross, Tyranitar, and Charizard, which were very painful to get through, believe me, oh my lord, they just would not go down. And the rest of his team is pretty much a piece of cake from there. Alakazam took a crit solar beam, healed, and took two more to go down. I made sure not to hit it with Toxic since it has Synchronize, and that could severely screw me over. Speaking from experience, because I got there on one of my earlier attempts and died because of it, and I slapped myself because I realized how dumb I was for not having researched that. Next up is Executor, and it just needed to go away, and Toxic helped with that, along with Sandstorm, leaving my solar beams to be saved with later Pokémon. The biggest downside during this point was that Sandstorm reduced the amount that I would heal thanks to Synthesis, meaning I couldn't get to full health without wasting all my PP. So I figured half was good enough and just went for the Solar Beam, and he used a full restore. Expected, but frustrating. It landed and did a surprising amount of damage, so I used Synthesis, Toxic, and another full restore. I really hate not being able to use these things. Eventually he just stopped and Toxic eventually killed him, but I was running low on health. But Gyarados was the last Pokemon, and all I needed to do was hit a Toxic and Solar Beam for the KO. I went for Toxic, and luckily he missed with Hyper Beam straight after leaving me to heal with Synthesis for the final time, delivering a Solar Beam, and winning me the League, therefore proving that you in fact can beat Pokemon Fire and Leaf Green with a single Chigurita, even the post-game. But looking at the final time, 19 hours and 2 minutes is extremely high, but understandable with all the trainers and fights that I had to do. I'm sure I'll pull that down with other runs since I'll be more used to the route, but Chikorita sure was freaking hard to start off with. I thought that starters were always willy-nilly, oh yeah, this is going to be a fun challenge solo run that I'll do in a couple hours, and oh believe me, this is not the case here. Chikorita is really bad, and I'm sure the other Johto starters will probably absolutely leave it in the dust. Especially, I mean literally, Cyndaquil and Totodile, they're both going to do well. In fact, I've already recorded the Cyndaquil run, and it's like two-thirds the size of this one. Cyndaquil might have some trouble with Brock and Misty, I won't spoil if it does, but past that, it should be perfectly fine to take down. And with that, thank you all for watching the video. This was a surprisingly long one for a simple solo challenge, so I'll make sure to try to cut out the fluff with future videos in this series. I'm wondering if any of these challenges will be easy enough to do in less than 10 hours. Well, testing will yield the results, so it's time to get back into the game. I'll see you guys next time with Cyndaquil. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked what I produced here, click on a video on a screen, you'll probably enjoy it too. And if you really enjoyed it and want to help me support making more content like this, go check out my Patreon page in the description below. Links are in there to Twitter, Patreon, and my Discord server if you guys want to hang out. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time.